not only are the highs more balanced and more definition, the bottom end is actually, you can actually feel and hear it. It says round. Hey guys, I'm super excited to show you what I got in the mail. So the other day, this came into my inbox. It's the much talked about Sonarworks Sound ID reference. For those that don't know, this is to help correct your referencing situation. Whether if you have bad acoustics in your room or you have a shitty pair of monitors or headphones, this will help you achieve accurate tonal balance so you can create and mix with proper referencing. Essentially with this toolkit, you'll be able to calibrate your speakers, your, your headphones, so you can get an accurate listening experience, which allows you to mix and create confidently. So loving the packaging and design, let's unbox this. Like this design. I love a nice unboxing experience. All right, so it looks like we got a calibration microphone here. I love the solid build. It has a nice metallic build to it. We got a microphone stand here. Okay, let's check out how to get started. So we have the register, download software. All right, so let's try this again. I was messing with this a couple times and couldn't get it until I chose this instead of ASIO. For whatever reason, the a test tone wouldn't come out unless I choose Wasapi. So choose that, choose your output, which is my speakers for my RME. Okay, so it's working. I guess the next part is to measure my speaker setup so I can calibrate my uh, speakers. So let's open measure, I guess. So my speaker configuration, I have two, I'm on stereo. I do have phantom power for my microphone. So it turns out you're gonna, if you're measuring with this uh, microphone, you'll need a microphone cable. X, I think it's a XLR to a microphone or whatever uh, type of input your audio interface requires because this is actually a microphone so it requires a cable to go into your sound card. So I believe I, I'm both, phantom power is on for my microphone input. My input and output is the same audio interface. And I guess I'll have to, no, I can hear my microphone input if I want. So I guess we need to mute the microphone. Okay, because this won't go through unless you do. So like your microphone input, that would be my Fireface USB analog uh, one. Tap it. Okay, yeah, input found, that's good. Okay, so I have to enter the microphone ID. Okay, so that's the microphone profile assigning the speaker. my outputs. Speaker. Okay, next setup listening spot. The following steps are designed to let the software know where your sweet spot is located. Please adjust the volume of your output device. My voice should sound at normal conversation volume. Okay. Left speaker. Right speaker. Clear out anything that could bump into you while you listen. Hold the measure microphone in your hand or use a stand. Keep the microphone in the center of your listening spot. Adjust the mic to the level of your ears while seated. Put the microphone between the speakers. Okay. All right, so I'm going to test this out. Start adjusting, I guess. Okay, looks like my speaker wasn't loud enough, so let's try that again. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. Right speaker done. So it appears I detected my speaker distance based on the measurements, which is pretty cool. And from here, it's gonna further calibrate my speakers using 37 different reference points. For the sake of time, I'll just show you a few and then cut the edit so you don't have to see all of it. All right, so we're finished calibrating. 
I guess these are my room measurements and save, I guess. I'm gonna save a stranger. Now I'll probably do this again uh, on my own time because obviously I have my monitor in front of my left speaker and that might affect the acoustics. But this is just to test it out. To use this, you can use it as a DAW plugin or you can use it as a sound ID reference as the sound output. Oh yeah, okay, so you can set sound ID reference as your audio, it's a virtual audio device. And then we can put on some music. I'll just put on some music that I've made. First and foremost, I don't think my foo bar is set to the right output there. Oh yeah, I can tell. It's, it says a lot more balance with the calibration enabled. So see if you can notice the difference. I can actually hear the the high end of my drums now. It sounds so clear. That's so sick. All right, so that was my test of Sonarworks Sound ID reference. Took about 20, 30 minutes to set it up, but after I set up, setting it up, it was all fine. So I'm looking forward to create a mix with this calibration enabled. I'm really curious to see the results when I'm using this thing. So I showed some of the kind of people at Sonarworks for uh, gifting me this toolkit. Really looking forward to using this in the studio. I'll keep you guys posted on the progression, how I make out when I use this. And yeah, if you're interested, check them out in the link below. You can learn more about Sound ID Reference by Sonarworks. Wow, guys, I just had to put this back on. When I stopped recording, I took a better listening. And one thing I didn't notice the first time was when I put it on again, I was listening to some other tracks and then I noticed how I could actually hear the sub bass in my listening, in my sitting position now. Bass and sub bass has always been an issue in my studio. It's just I'm, I'm confined to my work and living space. So there's only so much I can do in terms of acoustics and speaker setup. And so because of that, my bass response in this position has always been poor. I've never been able to really uh, feel or hear the sub bass. I would have to walk around in the room and kind of feel it out. But now I can actually feel and hear the sub bass how it's supposed to sound. And I think this is gonna be a game changer when I'm mixing and creating that because now I can actually see what's happening with those lower frequencies. I'm super excited now. Yeah, this is crazy. I, I wonder if you can even hear the difference while uh, playing, playing the audio, but I can hear. So that's on, on. So I'll turn it on and off. Just pay attention to this green button. So not only are the highs more balanced and more definition, the bottom end is actually, you can actually feel and hear it. It says round. So it's totally balanced from the bottom to the top frequencies. And that's amazing. So I didn't notice this the first time while I was doing this with you guys and recording. But then when I stopped recording and started listening again, I was like, whoa, I can actually feel and hear the sub bass. Insane. So Sonar Works, thanks again. I'm super excited to produce a mix of this. And again, I'll keep you guys posted on the progress with this toolkit. Anyways, peace. Hey, if you want to support, you can check out my products in the link below. My rollers kit for Ableton is out now, containing 23 modular instruments and over 400 MIDI and audio patterns. Use it to spark creativity for your next track. For the most upfront sounds and bass music, you can grab my Gnarly Serum Pack or Wubs and Wobbles for Vital. You can also check out my Jungle and Liquid Ableton production kits. 
Hint, if you don't have Ableton, you can grab the Wave Packs. If you're not ready to buy yet, you can always check out my free products also in the link below. Anyways, always appreciate your support. Have fun creating!